For the class? I am. You are? Yes. Okay. We're just getting the kids settled outside for a little bit. But, okay. Yeah. You saw some of them outside and now there's more going outside. So, here's what I understood. But we can do maybe some some of what you want and some of what I was told was Krishna Consciousness 101. Okay. That's what I was told. Okay, anything. Anything? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, you have, if you have any parenting advice too, yeah. feel free. <laughs> okay, Krishna Consciousness 101 and parenting. <laughs> Your sister is coming? She is. She's on her way. Yeah. One of the kids got sick. And you have children. I do. They're all, all three girls. And how old are they? So, um, um, oh, so, well, this is but 10 years old and uh, twin eight-year-olds. Twin eight-year-olds. Yeah, all girls. All girls. Got your hands full. <laughs> He's here to help me, so. Yeah. <laughs> so, what would you like? We're here to we're here to serve you. It's whatever she asks. <laughs> whatever she asks. That's very generous of you. How many wives would like their husbands to say that? <laughs> <laughs> You're a popular husband. <laughs> Quickly, I'll connect those two, Christian Consciousness 101 and Parenting. Um, just the other day, uh, in a class that I specifically remember Sri Radhika was attending because her antenna went up like that, that one of the... Um, we were reading from Third Canto Srimad Bhagavatam, about the process of creation and the part that Brahma does and after Brahma made the universe he was getting ready to fill up the universe with living entities but before that happened he was providing the resources for those living entities to fulfill the purpose of creation which is, what's the purpose of creation? To um, to come to the stage of reconnecting once again with the source of everything, with the absolute truth, whatever name you like, that that which is the source of everything, to reconnect with, with the, the source of everything. And uh, so he, he provided the resources for that before, the, before there was population. They had all the paraphernalia before they even took bodies. And um, in the course of that sequence of Brahma producing the means for achieving self-realization and God-realization, uh, there was mention that uh, those who are in a position of taking responsibility for others. Parents is one of them. Mothers and fathers is one category, but teachers is another category. Heads of state is another category. Spiritual master is another category. Those that have others who you're taking responsibility for, one of the primary responsibilities in parenting is to Ensure that the child, the dependent, those who are looking up to you, understand the importance of this human form of life, or the mission of the human form of life. We were discussing that even a little bit during the midday program today. Father, mother, two kids, not three, but... Um, having gone through some turmoil in our lives, I'm still trying to sort out what my mission is. So, 
if you don't know what your mission is, or if you don't know who you are, how are you going to fulfill the duty of being a parent? Because the duty of being a parent, according to the Vedic culture, is you invite a soul to become a family member. And there's a process for inviting a soul to become a family member. And once that soul becomes a member of the family, it's the duty of those who have invited that soul to take that soul to make, arrange, to facilitate for that soul, because you can't really take a soul back to the spiritual world, but you can um, provide the atmosphere, the resource, just like Brahma was doing. Everything from the, the caregiving side to facilitate self-realization, God-realization, ending the cycle of birth and death. So part of the, at least the way that we is our one of our rituals. The garment ritual. Okay. Oh, oh. <laughs> Part of our religion. Okay, so Krishna Consciousness 101 and Parenting Go Well Together, the two topics, because I, what I was thinking to speak about, Krishna Consciousness 101, is Bhagavad Gita, and Bhagavad Gita, before it goes to further topics and further topics and further topics, it starts with one very important topic, and that's, who are you? Because Arjuna's question was, what's my duty? Now, Krishna didn't say it like this, but before Arjuna, before we speak about what your duty is, let's talk about who you are, and then we'll talk about what your duty is. And that's Krishna Consciousness 101. Now, there, there are ways to live your life but in pursuit of what? Knowing who you are. And if you don't understand the, the value of this human, so parenting is to pass on in different, different, different ways. This is a very special opportunity, human form of life. Not just, you know, me, mom, and him, dad, or me, dad, and her, mom, but we're your parents, but this, this, here's the big picture. We've been at this for, who can count how many lifetimes? And if you're not so clear about it, let's do this one. Krishna Consciousness 101. Um, my dear three daughters. Here, see these pictures? This is little, little baby pictures. And that baby body is gone. Now here's a young girl's body. Well, that body's gone too. And now you have another body. And now it's, you know, 10 and 8. 11 and 8? 10 and 8. 10 and 8. Great! Take a picture. And then, you know, that body's going to be gone too. Now we, we use the language, you're growing. Let's look at it a different way. The cells of the body are dying off. New cells are taking their place. You're changing your body, because that baby body isn't around anymore. Not just it's grown, it's not around anymore. But you're around anymore. And then keep going and keep going and keep going, and then what happens with what's at the end of the train ride? Saying that the answer is, according to Bhagavad Gita, and it's quite logical, as you gave up the previous body to accept the next one, gave up that body to accept the next one, you Instead of it's taking place over seven years, because all cells change every seven years, boom, sudden change. Now what happens to that living entity? And you know, parenting can be done in so many ways to help understand you're not the body. You know, there's, besides Bhagavad Gita says, there's 
That's a common sense one. But then there's science ones. Everyone knows the science says it's got to be true, right? When you go to school, you learn that science knows. So, you know, as a parent, you can learn what science says. There's, there's not, it's not a proof. It's, it, it doesn't need too many other options. I'll, I'll share one of them that you can share with your kids. Parenting, Christian Consciousness 101. Um, there's a, a now deceased professor, Ian Stevenson from the University of Virginia, if I'm not wrong, who spent his whole career as a professor studying lives of people who remembered their previous life. And when the last book he wrote is where biology and reincarnation intersect. So here's the big pie, people that remember their previous lives. Here's a slice. People that have some kind of a bodily something or other that's connected to their previous life. And there's pictures of those people, and so I'll just marry a few of them. That's not proof, but it's really what other explanation is there? It's, it's by inference and logic and reason, which isn't proof. So, for example, here's three examples. One girl was born with half a leg. And she told Ian Stevenson, or his interviewers, in her previous life, she was run over by a train. And uh, when she was run over the train, her leg got mangled and one, of the, one half of her leg got cut off. And this is where I live, and this was my name, and da 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 So, step number one, after that report, go to the birth record, is that, was, was that there from birth, or did it happen later? There from birth, okay. Next step, go to the place where the person said they lived in their name and their, you know, the autopsy, and yes, it showed that the leg was severed. And, you know, the name of the person and their family and the this and that, okay, it all matches. So maybe there's another explanation. And then you go, you know, to 100 other, 500 other ones. Here's another one. One girl was born with a leg that had marks around the leg that looked like rope marks. Both legs. And the girl said, in my previous life I was a man and I, had, I was carrying on an affair with another man's wife. The other man found out I was doing that. He tied me up to my legs with ropes and threw me in the bottom of the well and I died. <coughs> Step number one, was that mark there from birth? Yes. Step number two, go back to the place, the name of the person and the, the, you know, the, 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 the man who killed him and his wife and the man who killed him and knitted it. Yeah, I tied the guy up. <laughs> Could be another explanation. Here's another one. Some, some fellow from the Middle East had a scar here and a scar there. And his name was something or other. And he said, I got this, these scars because in my previous life I was a robber. And my brother and I, from when we were kids, we did mischievous things, and it turned into escalated, and it became robbers, and eventually the people in the village got tired of us, and they got together a posse and, and deputized themselves and went chasing after us, and we went running up a mountain, and we went into a cabin, and we were surrounded, and so I killed my brother, and then I took my gun and killed myself. The bullet went in here and out there. First step. That mark there from his birth. Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> What's up? That's it? 
<laughs> you need dad to help you do something? Yeah. Yeah? Go ahead. Dad's a four. So then step two, we went back to the place and you know, uh, the story, his name, his brother's name, the autopsy, the whole thing. Da, da, da. Maybe there's another explanation. Not a proof. But then, you know, you add a couple hundred more proofs. There's more to the story. But the, the, this man, because Charlottesville is not far from Washington, D.C., the chief editor of the Post, Washington Post, thought, humbug, reincarnation, humbug, I'm Christian, humbug. So let's go meet this guy. So he met the guy, met Ian Stevenson. And he, he wrote an article, it appeared on the front page of Washington Post. He, he, he became so fascinated with what he found. Can I travel with you and see how you do your thing? So he traveled with him to do his thing and writes in this article in Washington Post. We were sitting in some cafe somewhere in Southeast Asia and I said, how do you find these people? And he said, well, let's try this kid. He was like a, a waiter at the cafe and he had a mark on his arm. And he said, you know, how'd you get the mark on your arm? He said, in my previous life, my mother put a mark on my arm when I died <clears throat> so she would know who I was in my next life. And, you know, okay, was that mark there from birth and the whole thing. You know, so some people can't, some people can't remember their previous life, I can't. But some people can. There's, there's videos of young American kids. And maybe you've seen some of them. You know, a, a World War II airplane pilot <coughs> telling mom and dad about, you know, the Japs and, you know, F-14s and, you know, all the lingo and, you know, the da 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 and his name and how he died. So the parents were thinking, you know, what's with this? So they, they met, I met the man that was on the aircraft carrier, remember the fellow that, you know, he, he was, it was a night landing in a storm and he missed the aircraft carrier and he crashed and got drowned in the sea. But he was a, a pilot in World War II. And little boy knew all about planes. Although he never read books about planes, he just knew all about planes. Yeah. And all the language and all the this and the that. And on and on, there's so many. Hey, it's not proof. But that just says something about the previous life and remembering a previous life in this life. So we're, we're not the body, we're the, we're the Deha, with our, within the Dehi, or the other way around, we're the Dehi, we're the occupant of the body, the body is Deha. We're not the body. And this human form of life is an opportunity to realize not only who we aren't, but the good news is who we really are. This is the human mission. There's so many other, if we don't know that one, we have so many other ones. We try this one on, try that one on, wear it for a while, discard it, get another one. Maybe, you know, a whole lifetime's worth of, you know, one that's not really who we are. Or some combination and permutation and but the human form of life is to learn who we really are. Now, how you pass that on as a parent to your dependent children if you don't know who you are? Or if you're not essentially involved in the project of trying to understand who you are? Good luck. You can't give something to somebody you don't have. So that's Christian Consciousness 101, Parenting 101. And then, you know, there's, there, there's so many other things that are the, you know, the incubation chamber for that one. You know, like morality and good conduct. 
sure parents all over the world teach, but not all parents all over the world teach who you are. They teach behaviors. That's good. Behaviors are good. Good behaviors are good. Good behaviors are good. Parents should teach good behaviors. But good behaviors aren't going to endure the onslaught of technology and the degradation of the age of Kali that's eroding character really fast. I'm not a parent, but I hear from parents all the time. My kids go to school and they're hearing all this trash. And what do we do? Should have thought of that before you had kids. <laughs> <laughs> and then so you provided a, a, an atmosphere that's appropriate to grow that which will support the good behavior. and have friends that your kids can be with that understand the difference between right and wrong. But now, you know, the, 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 where does right and wrong stand? Yesterday was way over there, today it's way over here. And tomorrow, who knows where it's going to be? And, you know, your parent. So, uh, something that I appreciate very much, one of our sannyasis, uh, Bhakti Tirtha Swami, said, in, in Africa, there is the saying, because he's an African-American, to raise a child that takes a village. I mean, parents have the biggest role, but parents don't have the only role, because then friends of the family, and in school, and, you know, the, the circles go out, and those social, in forces impact the, the values of the child, the values of the parents. Because like one of the topics we talked about midday was money. And, you know, what, what's the role of money? And when the question was, how do we reach the point where it's enough? Well, as long as you're governed by the mode of passion, it's never enough. Just it's a ugly universe. Never enough. Dushparina on the lane of Burns like fire. Put more fuel in it. Have a bigger fire. More fuel. Bigger fire. Mm. So what's important? What's, what's the human mission? Christian Consciousness 101 starts with that. It's not an ism. It's, in other words, not a, this isn't that ism, and this ism is better than that ism kind of a thing. It's just a principle of uh, who we are, and how to awaken consciousness of who we are. And those, those principles apply to any ism that gets you there. That is a sectarian ism. It's a principle of um, awakening higher consciousness. And, and the, the consequences of not doing so are misery and going downwards into the lower species of life because of neglect of the facility given to the human form of life. I mean, it, it, it's not like an intimidation threat, it's just common sense. You're given a, 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 a fantastic facility and you misuse it. You use it for hurtful purposes rather than elevating purposes. It's taken from you by the laws of nature. And what are you left with? Lower consciousness, lower position, somewhere down the evolutionary scale. Then gradually work up to the human form of life, and now here's an opportunity, once again, the bell rings, and there's an opportunity to go. Parenting. 
Any tips? <laughs> My experience is parenting is a topic that knows no end. It's deeper than the ocean. <laughs> Once you start going, it goes and it goes and it goes and it goes and it goes. So, even when you try to like, just let's not talk to, to about you know, this problem, that problem, and problem solving with parenting, let's just stick with principles. It's still, it gets, the envelope gets pushed over into problems. Because it's not an easy task. And they're not, a, not like a fantastic support structure within the society that we're living to assist you in the parenting service. There's, a, there's many resources, and some like these resources, and some like those resources. Parents should reach out to resources that they find relevant and relatable to them, to their life and their situation. But the best, you know, ultimately the best resource is um, three things, the holy name, because the Holy Name makes the heart pure. That's a good start, an, an essential start. Chaita Dharma and Marjana. And then with that heart that's pure, to take the wisdom of Bhagavad Gita, that's introductory, you know, Krishna Consciousness 101, and try to understand it. Try to understand who you are, try to understand your, your duty as a parent from the lens of Bhagavad Gita. What's what's your what's your mission? In between over here is your birth and over there is your death and in the middle is your parenting part of your of your life. What's your what's your what's the big picture of your mission? And to know Krishna, how can you know Krishna if you don't even know who you are? The goal the goal is stated right in Bhagavad Gita. The purpose of all the Vedas is one thing, to know Krishna. And the means of knowing Krishna is through bhakti. But how can you perform bhakti properly if you don't know who you are and you think you're something or you're not? I mean, you can, you have to start somewhere. But the, 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 the lens through the chanting of the holy name, looking at, through this more purified lens, this descending knowledge of Bhagavad Gita will help you carry out all of your duties. Because that was Arjuna's question. What's my duty? And how many people ask that question? It's more like, what's in it for me? In different ways of saying. Because our, 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 certainly there's a sense of duty, the duty of parenting, but, or the duty of this thing and that thing. But um, to understand that sense of duty, we have to understand who we are, what's the purpose of who we are. I'm repeating myself now, but I've been listening to um, hours and hours and hours and hours. Somebody gave me this nice gift of, a little machine that's about this big, and it's got all the Prabhupada's recorded lectures on it. I just listen and listen and listen and listen. And he's, he's very consistent with different audiences. It's expressed in different ways. But he's very consistent. You know, it's Krishna Consciousness 101. We can't, we can't go to 201, 301, 401 if we don't get 101. We can hear about the higher stages of bhakti, but we won't understand it properly. It won't. It may inspire us somewhat, but we, we really can't appreciate and taste that without fundamentals. Your emotional needs and 
social needs and you know the this the package the holistic package of a living entity that takes birth so parenting includes seeing to those things but align those things with this one thing and it makes your job much easier and you're doing your job say it negatively the, 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 for those who don't do that one thing, it becomes so much more complicated and so much more, so much less effective in what parenting really means. There's one verse I recommend that you, all of you who are parents, you read. Uh, Canto 1, Chapter 9, with Bhishma Dev's instructions to Yudhisthira. And he speaks about, uh, well, there's two verses. And he speaks about um, a teacher. And it, it, it's equally so with parenting. And so the, 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 the boy and young boys are sent to the home of the guru and they teach <laughs> and they teach to be very so polite to be very careful to not disturb us. You've trained your master. <laughs> uh, the boys go to the home of the guru. This is a traditional school education system. And the first thing that the guru it teaches is character. And while developing the character of the student, he's observing the nature of the student. And the nature of the student, some are inclined for this, so he gives special training in this, or some are inclined to that. And if he's not really capable in the, in the other, they'll send him to another guru who can train him in the other. But you know, so what's your propensity? But propensity rests upon character. Everyone gets character training. So in other words, varna. And then another stage is ashram. Some are inclined to remain detached, and some are inclined to be more attached. So when a teacher is just to, parent is to see the nature of their dependent, their child, their student, and, and guide them accordingly. Situate them in Varna and Ashram accordingly. So provide resources accordingly. So there's, you know, the. have children, you have three daughters, so what's their nature? You're, you, the, the conveying character as best you, you have it, not forcing, but creating an atmosphere that's conducive for that. Not just the behavior, but character. Different, those are, they're different things. And there's something that's even, okay, so I'll, I'll say this. Um,
culture. <coughs> With culture, there's it, it's sometimes compared to an iceberg. There's a, the, the tip of the iceberg is behaviors. Below the tip of the iceberg is values. Below values is deeply held, <coughs> unchanging, immovable, fixed, deeply held convictions. Upon that rest the values, upon that rest behaviors. So parenting and Krishna Consciousness 101 is to focus on the deepest. You don't pay no attention to behaviors, but it's, the behavior is not the essence. And the, the, the obstacle in material life, for those of us that have body for in material life, that's every one of us, is the strong identification with the body, which is not who we are, but it's strong identification with, so to, it's not to break it by trashing it, but we engage it in such a way we can realize who we really are. That's what the values are for, is for this higher purpose, the human mission. It's, it, it, it's, it's deep, it's the deepest, but it's the human mission, the deeply held conviction. It starts with, I'm spirit soul, not this body. But it, 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 it is meant to be mature. I'm by the spirit soul, not this body. I'm part of the big soul, or like a spark of fire, part of the big fire, or a drop of water, part of the big body of water. I'm a small part of something that's much bigger than me. There's the body, and there's a much bigger than me supply of the material elements. And this tiny spirit soul, it's one tiny spirit soul, and there's so many other tiny spirit souls part of the Supreme Soul. And I have a relationship with that Supreme Soul, and that, so it just keeps, it matures. But when can't, it, it's, it's notional only if one speaks about go to heaven. If you don't understand, you're not the body. You know, go to the good place. I learned that when I was little. We all learned it when we were little. And the way you go to heaven is you, you be good do pious deeds and you get pious credits in this life and you prosper in this life and then you go to the good place. That's temporary. That's not what the kingdom of God is. It's not, it's not the goal. It's a place to go to. Hawaii is a place to go to also. I mean, it's a nice place. <laughs> Sometimes there's volcanoes, but otherwise it's a nice place. <laughs> and heaven's a much nicer place. But beyond the much, but it's temporary. That's Bhagavad Gita. Antavatu Palam it, it It's limited and temporary. And as long as we're not taught that there's something that's permanent, a place of, of permanent freedom, unlimited happiness, happiness that knows no boundaries, let's go. But we're not, you know, we're, we're tightly holding on to the temporary, so we're, we can't go. So how do we engage ourselves with the temporary in such a way it's in harmony with that higher goal? We have to connect with you know, the sort with the, the spiritual intelligence that Krishna will give to someone who wants to be with him. So it's not mythology, it's a, it's a way of life, a life of higher consciousness, a life of self-realization.
since it's so nice, why doesn't everybody want to go there? And why do we want to, why do we don't sufficiently want to go there? We're attached to the temper. By conditioning, not like we love misery, but we love some things that are the sources of misery. We're attached to them. We're just ha ha habituated to them. Like somebody that's... I heard this from a, a, a young devotee. They have friends in India that have all spoiled their lives. They went to college, they did their undergraduate study in India, now their graduate study over here. Their friends have all alcoholic, drug addiction, this and that, the other thing. Because they don't have a spiritual core. Good people, you know, they went to school with their friends. Without a spirit, it's really a dangerous place. You know, it's not just scare tactic. It's a dangerous place. It's a dangerous place. And it, it doesn't get easier as time passes. So, parents, you know, chant your japa nicely and read Bhagavad Gita carefully and associate with persons who are on that wanting to make their trajectory go further very serious about it and in that good association your fire of attraction for that goal will become stronger and then you can be better parents you know and all the other well what about this and that the other details of the complexities of parenting in modern society you have some other people to turn to for some wisdom You want to add anything? No, I'm sure I'm good. Okay. Thank you. Our host, do you want to add anything? Got enough. <laughs> okay. My sister's here. I don't know. Did you want to add anything? Anything that you'd like to learn about? Why well, ask about parenting? One of your kids is sick? Uh, yeah. Two of them. Two of them sick. So anybody, anything, it's free for all, whatever you'd like. Yes? So, Maharaj, you mentioned that uh, deep convictions are the basis of values and behaviors. Well, that's close. So I was thinking that uh, isn't that conceptions and convictions the soul brings from past birth also? So th those convictions could be very strong. Yes, that's right. So teaching them that I am spirit soul and part and parcel of Krishna, so it doesn't it become a matter of realization? Of course, of course. but. You can teach it, and better that you model it. And not to say that you don't, I'm just saying between the two, words, example is stronger than words. Words should represent character, and character is stronger than, than the words. Your, your, beha your behavior speaks volumes without saying anything. And then when you say something, it should just represent the character and behavior that you have. And that's the deeply held convictions. Then it's, then it's consistent. There's alignment for it with everything.
a little bit fall off the arch. That okay. so in the beginning it might feel that it, it is difficult for the child to take it up, but still if if I keep doing that with full conviction of my own, then they might be able to take it up some point in time. Well, you you're sending you. Yes, but I'll say it a little differently. <clears throat> it's not just your own practices and your own convictions. It's as a parent, you, you know, notionally or ideally, want to create uh, a, an incubation chamber, you know, a, a, a space that's conducive. It's just like gardening. You can't guarantee what the garden is going to look like. You get some seeds and you germinate the seeds and make the soil nice and the right amount of light and the right amount of water and the right amount of this. And that's what you do when you're gardening. Or when you're parenting, you just... You what's, it, you, what's inside comes... is, is transmitted. Even, even if for some period of time that the child is out to lunch, rebellious or something. <coughs> or, you know, during the earlier stages of your children, you weren't practicing a life of devotion and you may have done, you know, the, the number of parents speak <coughs> like that. I was to this or to that or something or other. And then, so there's some regret. It's not uncommon. Uh, but so you can't redo the past. You know, no, no real strength in obsessing over what wasn't done right in the past. There's no harm in saying, you know, indirectly or directly. You know, I, I'm sorry. I, I personally, I feel regret for how I, and so, but depending upon the, you know, the, 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 the soul, like, you know, the, the gardener, the planting seeds, the, the seeds are important. Where are you getting, where are you getting the seed that you're doing your gardening with? The good gardeners want to make sure they have, it's from the right place, the seeds. So, and then you cultivate. So you, yes, you continue, but your continuing is who you are and the atmosphere that you provide. <coughs> Not just stuff, but the, uh, the atmosphere. I see a lot of difficult things that I am uh, calling shut up, you know, like I, in case if I'm going to say my um, son, hey, um, you don't get angry, just cool down, cool down, but I don't practice it when, say it's time for the bus, I'm going to be, come on, eat fast, you have to get hurry in my everyday life, I'm like going to, a um, few times I'll tell, but at the tenth time I'll be like looking mad. So, um, how do I, well, I, I cannot be the perfect example. And then he's going to say, you, you told me not to shout, but you are yelling at me. So how do I... Good, good for him. <laughs> <laughs> but in everyday life, there is challenges. At the morning, I'm very fresh. I chant my java. I say it's going to be a great day. Keep I'm trying. happy Krishna. Keep it doesn't happy. stay like that forever. It's going to, I'm going to face the world. and <laughs> There are so many things going around me. <laughs> like I said, this parenting topic can go on forever. <laughs> this is just one example of the forever. <laughs> so, when you're, when you're, the, the sooner you can remember to do this, the better. But you say to your son, I'm sorry.
And in the future, I mean, it depends on you, it depends on the son and the relationship between you two. But, you know, one, here's one option. I'm less than perfect. And I, I'm not expecting you to be perfect. But I do want to help both you and me to have this behavior that's, you know, respecting one another and respecting standards. And that's where I'm coming from. Now, when it gets to the point where I am feeling some frustration like I felt this morning, let's talk a little bit about what may help you when those moments come. Because I'm your mom and I, I, I'm here for you. And it's not just, you know, make, don't miss the bus, but it's life. You know, I, I don't know how you talk to your son, but, you know, my, my sense is that when you speak to even a, a smaller person, as if they're a rational person, like an adult, as, as some adults aren't rational, <laughs> but if they're a rational person, they'll respond as a rational person than if you talk down to them. And if you talk down to them, but they'll behave like, you know, you're, 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 looking at them as somebody that's an imbecile. Anyway, you treat them with dignity and they'll respond with dignity, more likely. It becomes the culture in the family and the culture of the person because you're teaching by example how to work through, you know, a difficulty in a relationship. In this case it's with mom, but it can be with others. So you're modeling how to work through difficulty in the relationship they may have with whoever they may have a relationship with. You're modeling it. So that next time they lose it, they'll come to you and say, Mom, I'm really sorry. Just like you said to me you know, the other afternoon. I, I did it again. I lost it and I spoke back. And it was so, anyway. It's part of parenting, part of relationships. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you're big and the, 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 the dependent is dependent. So you have to model more than they do. But you model, you're more likely to get the, the model from them than just the behavior. But, you know, the, the character. How do you deal with situations where you step over the line? Behavior-wise because you're frustrated or, or whatever else is going on, lazy or distracted or not focused. The, the spiritual solution is the best solution because it takes care of everything for you and for your dependents. And we're not there yet because we're not there yet. <laughs> So then you start with dignity and respect. You model it. Try. <laughs> yes? Do we uh, apply this principle um, of that one should not become an educator and, uh, or a teacher unless and until uh, one delivers um, their or parent uh, or mother, uh, father? Yeah, I'm particularly, I'm particularly um, uh, you know, asking from the uh, uh, you know, perspective of a teacher. Um, as educators in, um, in the world where not necessarily there is a Krishna conscious um, um, forum, how do we apply this? Well, it's a compromise. That's how we apply it. Are you talking like public school? Uh, yes, any school system. Okay. It's a compromise. They don't apply it. It's not their, they, that's not their, their, 
They didn't sign up for that. Deliver their students from the cycle of birth and death. They didn't sign up for that. Just teach them that. Mm -hmm. um, but the teachers, the teachers that students remember the most is when they went beyond teaching math or science or social studies or whatever it is, and they started teaching them values of life. Now, the values of life is not overcoming birth and death, but it's, you know, it's a step beyond science, math, and <coughs> social studies. So, why are you asking that question? I'm more um, asking it from, from a perspective of a teacher. In, uh, as, you, in a, as in yourself? As in myself. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, what's your role? Well, you know, you have, it depends on the school system. But you, you, there, there are boundaries. There's protocols of what you're. It's not okay for you. But depending upon you know the, the school system in which you're teaching, you there may be some uh, privileges that you can exercise, kind of you know extracurricular, like. Meeting the family outside of the classroom situation, going to their home. There's, there's, um, in in Tennessee, one of the places I visit. Uh, there's a school teacher in their school, where these these devotees go to school, that for like several years has been the number one voted, you know, favorite teacher in the state, out of the whole state. And this is what she does. She, she gets to know the families. Because a, a big part of education plus or education minus is the situation in the home. Speak to Murray Chaitanya sometime, something that he did with special ed. And he learned the problem with special ed kids is in the home, not the kids. So he spent time in the home, and the kids got much better at their academics. So, and this is like an outstanding high school teacher, where the kids aren't like discipline problem kids. They're just, you know, they're, they're excelling kids because here's a teacher that really cares about them to the extent that she'll take her time. Now, we're all busy, and so we can't be Superman, or, you know, three Supermans, but it's a principle of indicating to the, the child that they're important and there are things that are in life that are important about them and you're concerned not like you, you, you own their problems or difficulties or what goes on in the curriculum in the classroom. That's a special person. You can touch their lives. And it can be in really simple ways. Doesn't have to be about we get a class. It can be really simple ways. It makes an indelible impression. <coughs> yes. Uh, Mahas, uh, I, I think you said uh, two chapters to study, or did I hear wrong? Two verses. Uh, two, two verses. verses. Okay. Two verses. Two verses. Oh, yeah, I did say. So one was that one, so. Chapter, Canto 1, Chapter 9, text number something or other. Toward, you know, it's midway in the chapter. And then the other one. thoughts about disciplining children model what my spiritual master said about disciplining children. And it's a long story, but the short of it is, first, the child needs to feel 
the place that the parent is coming from is a place of love. And that you're abundantly coming from a place of love. Then, and only then, discipline. And in his words, you show the stick, but don't use the stick. You know, like, that's the stick. But you don't, you never... Now, parenting in India is, you know, slapping is common. <laughs> but Prabhupada was Indian. And he said, you know, don't use the stick. And when it's done in that way, then, you know, it's not coming out of a place of frustration or anger, it's coming out of a place of love, and there's the embrace, you know, right after, or shortly thereafter. But it never, so, you know, draw some lines. If, if, when it's necessary. And, and it, my sense is not just when a line has to be drawn, there's abundant explanation of why. There may not be agreement as to why, but at least the child knows why. And you ask them, you know, can you give some reasons why you might go? So, you know, if you're respecting their intelligence and their dignity, and there's space, but there's lines. And then there's whys behind those lines, and here's the line. And, you know, to some degree even being flexible with the line, but a line has to be drawn. Otherwise, it's... It, 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 it goes further out and further out and further out. It has to be a line. And, and generally, <clears throat> it's due to bad association. And so parents need to know who their children are associating with because a good child can become bad through bad association. And then once the bad association there, it becomes habitual. It's hard to break the habit. So better to like be conscious of the character of who your children are associating with before it gets to be a habit. If it's bad association. You know, innocent is one thing, but you know, sustained bad association is another.